it's a bank holiday weekend but unfortunately it's grey overcast no sunshine today so it's time for a kit build and this is the one i've gone for and as you can see there's very little in the way of instruction just uh, the silk screen here on the pcb which is fairly self-explanatory so that shouldn't be too difficult and they've even gone to the point of putting uh, bottom in the uh, copper trace so you know which is top and which is bottom so i guess it doesn't really need any instruction and here's the item on ebay this was six dollars 95 with two dollars shipping or best offer and uh, it's a 12 volt lead acid battery diesel fader kit original kit not a copy it says here so why do we need a desulfator well a battery is deemed to be sulfated when crystals are forming on the lead acid plates and those crystals can actually reduce the capacity of your battery over time as they build up so a desulfator sends spikes of high voltage um, across your battery with the idea that that dislodges those crystals then they hopefully get reabsorbed into the electrolyte in your battery so they say a desulfator can fix uh, low capacity batteries and also ensure your new batteries remain in tip-top shape for a much longer time so here we have the circuit diagram which was also in the ebay listing and uh, we can take this circuit in two parts i guess to make it a little bit easier to understand so if we look at the left hand side first we have a 555 timer configured in a stable mode and we can tell that because pin 6 and pin 2 are connected together obviously pin 2 is the trigger and pin 6 is the threshold and the capacitor down here is being charged up through these two resistors from the lead acid battery and as soon as that's charged up to two thirds of the supply voltage the threshold pin goes low and we start to discharge the capacitor through this resistor into here pin 7 the discharge pin so that capacitor discharges until we reach one third of the supply voltage at which point the 555 reconfigures itself turns off the discharge and the capacitor is able to charge up again through those two resistors and that of course means that the output here oscillates according to whether this capacitor is charged or discharged and if we look at the right hand side of the circuit that output is controlling the gate here of this p channel mosfet which is switching in these two inductors here the current passing through these inductors induces a magnetic field which uh, breaks down as soon as the connection is turned off and that magnetic energy is turned back into electrical energy and that is the spike which is put back into the battery which in theory should help desulfate your lead acid plates so without further ado should we put it together and see if it works so i'll now go through and identify all the resistors and put them in place because they'll need to be soldered in first okay so we'll get this blue tack on so they don't fall out Just give it a stretch first excellent we'll get those soldered in now this board looks nice and clean and my solder's already got flux in it so i'm not sure i'm gonna need to bother with the flux pen in fact, to be honest, it's something I very rarely use, is additional flux. I find I don't tend to need it, and then it just makes such a mess of everything. I know it's not too difficult to wash off, but even so, don't see the point of using it if I don't need to so these capacitors then a 47n goes in that hole there and another is it no this is a 1m5 goes there 
And of course you need to make sure that the 555 is oriented the right way. This little cutout here is marked on the silk screen. And the next thing is this electrolytic. It's a 47 microfarad, 50 volt. And of course it is polarised and this is the negative side, the side with the shorter leg. And on the silk screen the positive is marked so the longer leg needs to go through there. And then I think we'll do the LED that goes in there because you can't have a piece of electronics can you that doesn't have an LED to show that it's working. The next item I think is this diode, the 1N5408, which uh, is quite a hefty diode I believe. Certainly the cables on it are quite thick. Right, I'll cut those off and I think these are definitely worth keeping, they'll be uh, handy I'm sure. Now time for the inductors, but this 1000 micro henry inductor well, the holes are uh, a bit far away for the actual components. You can see they were actually splaying those legs a bit. Just two more components to put in now. A 2 amp 250 volt fuse and the IRF 9Z34N MOSFET. So the uh, fuse should fit in between there and uh, hopefully that will solder ok. So finally here the MOSFET is marked with a thick line here at the top, that's where the tab of the MOSFET uh, needs to be oriented, so uh, that just fits or should fit, ah, there we go, in there. So that's all the supplied components uh, soldered into the PCB, hopefully all in the right place. So now I just need to find a bit of wire for the positive and negative terminals to connect to my battery. So I've grabbed some 2.5mm uh, squared uh, black and red cable. I can't quite remember what AWG this is. Um, oh, I've cut off right at the point where it tells me. 14. It's 14 AWG. Uh, but unfortunately, 14 AWG is a bit big for these holes. So uh, I think I'm actually going to drill these out a little bit um, to make them accommodate this cable. And there it is, job complete. I just need to put some connectors on the end and attach it to a battery. So I've placed some spade connectors here, crimped on the end and soldered for those who are a fan of both. Okay, so here we have it on top of a small lead acid battery here. It's a 12 volt, 7.2 amp hour long battery. And uh, if we plug the positive in there, and then the negative, nothing went bang. And we've got an LED, so it must be working. In fact, I'm pretty sure I can hear it working. Yeah, we'll have to see later if that comes out. And now we can see it working. Here we are on the oscilloscope and we can see the frequency is 1.8 kilohertz there, definitely in the audible range. And uh, the voltage of the battery is 12.3 uh, volts there, but we're seeing peaks of 15.5 volts. Let's have a closer look at one of those waveforms. So here we are zoomed in and we've got 500 milliseconds per division so that's six divisions three volts above the battery voltage here and this main pulse here there is a little bit of oscillation as we saw before the main pulse lasts for about 60 nanoseconds in total and three volts above the battery voltage well whether that will do anything i guess only time will tell well that's the 555 based desulfator kit from eBay. It's quite a straightforward and fun build to do. It's definitely producing 
higher voltage pulses back into that battery. Whether that's going to desulfate my battery or not, well, that remains to be seen. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.